Demos and bumps have to be the most hated mechanic in Rocket League. No other mechanic comes close to producing the amount of toxicity, anger, hate and rage that demos and bumps do. So why does everybody hate it when it's the most overpowered mechanic in Rocket League? Well in this video we're going to answer that question as well as how to demo, when you should demo and also how you can avoid demos as well. This is why demos are the most overpowered mechanic in Rocket League. First, we're going to talk about how to actually land a demo. To land a demo, you need to drive or flip into your opponent at supersonic speed. If you only drive into them normally, this usually will only bump them and sometimes even gets you demoed yourself. The other important factor to a demo is what's called the angle of attack. The angle at which you flip or drive into the opponent's car. Driving into the side or the back of their car is more likely to demo them, whereas hitting them in the front of the car or the nose can sometimes result in you getting demoed yourself. So now that we know the basics of a demo, let's talk about when you should and shouldn't demo. The most important aspect of a demo is always timing. This isn't even necessarily the demo itself, but when you choose to demo. Demos only work in certain scenarios. We'll begin with the scenarios where you should be demoing, starting with when you're rotating back. Demoing while rotating back is one of the best ways to demo because it's what we call a low risk play. What do I mean by this? Well, whenever you go for a play and then begin to rotate back, you are technically out of position. As a result of this, you are usually behind the opponents, allowing you to surprise them with a demo. The key to this is to go for demos along your usual rotation pattern. So if you're rotating to the right side of the field towards the boost and there happens to be an opponent there, going for a demo is not a bad option. It deprives them of the boost that they would get, of any attack that they could get, as well as setting up a possible counter attack with only one of them to defend. It's important to be speedy with this because ultimately your teammate is still the only one back defending your net. The second scenario is what we call a 2v1 situation. A 2v1 situation is essentially when both you and your teammate are faced with only one of the opponents. If you are second man in this position, so the one who is not on the ball, going for a demo in this situation is very beneficial because it removes their only defender, leaving the net open for your teammate. The key with this is to drive in front of your teammate and for your teammate to take time so that you can actually demo. Even a bump will work in this situation as long as you are preventing the opponent from reaching the ball. It is also important to note that there has to be space between your teammate and the opponent for you to actually go in and demo. If they are close to one another, it is unlikely that you will be able to reach the opponent before the opponent decides to challenge. This risks them beating your teammate, so only go for a demo if they can't challenge straight away. The next scenario is a 1v1 situation. Much like a 2v1 situation, a 1v1 situation seeks to eliminate the sole opponent in their net. The most important thing with this scenario is to get the ball to roll towards the net while also allowing your car to overtake it to try and get a demo. The easiest way to do this is to do a simple pop over your car and then keep driving underneath. Other ways include ground to air dribbles, flicks upwards, jumping over the ball, even just driving around the ball. The key thing is just that the ball has to be rolling towards the net and you need to be between the ball and the opponent. It is also important to note here that demos off kickoffs are also extremely helpful. The reason I haven't included this specifically in this video is because I cover it in one of my previous videos. So if you're interested in how to demo off kickoff, I highly suggest you check out that video. So now that we've talked about when you should be demoing, what about situations when you shouldn't go for a demo? Well, for the most part, if you are on the ball, don't go for a demo because this usually gives up possession and puts your teammate under pressure. The only exception to this rule is when you're in a 1v1 situation and still, when you do that, you have to ensure you're able to cover net afterwards. 
If you are second man, you can go for demos as long as you're ultimately still rotating back and able to cover net afterwards. If you are giving up possession or unable to cover net, you risk getting scored on. If you also have to break rotation or stop defending net to demo, it's ultimately not worth going for the demo. This again risks putting pressure on your teammate and also getting scored on. So basically, when to go for a demo relies a lot on how you judge the play. The risk Converse reward of going and not going for a demo. So now you should know how to go about a demo, but how do you dodge someone trying to demo you? Well, there are three main ways of doing this. The first way is to simply single jump over the opponents. The key with this is to leave roughly one car's length between you and the car trying to demo you so that you don't accidentally get demoed and it can avoid them jumping up and trying to hit you. The only problem with this is that you are unable to get back to the ground quickly so you will have to flip mid-air into the ball if say there is another opponent trying to hit the ball in the net. The second way to dodge a demo is by jumping upwards like in the first way but then rotating your car upside down so that the roof is pointing towards the ground and then using your second jump to push your car towards the ground again. Finally rotating it back so you can land cleanly on the ground. This is a quicker way of dodging as it gets your car back to the ground quicker but it is a little bit tricky to learn at first. I would highly recommend that you learn how to do this though, it's the best way to dodge a demo and recover to hit the ball again. The third way is to use the side walls to dodge a demo. This can be the walls within your goal or just on the side of the pitch. Basically you want to use your air roll to jump onto the wall and then off the wall again to try and manoeuvre your way around your opponents. The key with all of these strategies is that you have to leave a little bit of space between you and the person trying to demo you so that you can perform these manoeuvres. This will take lots of practice to learn but try and use these in your games from now on. On. Now we're going to answer that million dollar question. Why do people hate demos so much? Well, it's because people think they're a cheap and easy way to get goals. And the reality is they're not easy. This video is a perfect example of why demos in general are actually not as easy as they seem. There is real thought and skill that goes into demoing and it's not necessarily an easy mechanic to execute. Hopefully this video acts as a bit of a guideline as to how to execute a demo properly and shows you why demos can be the most overpowered mechanic in Rocket League. Thanks for watching guys, we're on the road to a thousand subscribers so if you like what you saw feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.